More than 200 years ago, Americans fought a revolution. A revolution against big government. He has erected a multitude of new offices and has sent hither swarms of officials to harass our people and eat out their substance. George III and his bureaucrats taxed and controlled their lives until the people said, enough. Wiretaps, mail openings, informants. Hi, welcome to On Second Thought. I'm the co-host of the show, Susan King, and the host of our show, Mr. William Wagner. Thank you for joining us. I'm Ted Gunderson, former head of the FBI in Southern California. I retired in 1979 after I furnished considerable information to A. Wagner. If you want the full story, you want to know what's going on, watch Wagner. Thank you. I'm William Wagner. I'm going to show you the Santa Clara County injustices. But we found a case, a genuine case, of William Joseph Christopher. Who's William Joseph Christopher? He's just a hard-working guy, worked at uh, Intel, uh, worked as a school teacher for a while. If you want the full story, you want to know what's going on, watch Wagner. And he married this Filipino-born woman, and all she had to do was accuse him with no evidence, just accuse him of domestic violence, and voila, his life turned upside down. He found himself arrested, put in Santa Clara County Jail. That was 1999. And in 2005, Mr. William Joseph Christopher is still incarcerated and he has not had a trial. Is something wrong with this? Six years incarceration without a trial. Is this the Soviet Union or Santa Clara County? Well, we went up there to tape his uh, court appearance and see how rational this man was. Because the way they did it is they arrested him, charged him. They had a prelim. Uh, his ex, soon-to-be ex-wife in 1999 uh, testified that she had been beaten while she was pregnant. Unfortunately, she didn't run to the doctor and document this. But it was good enough for the PD, even though they noted on their police report they saw no bruises or evidence of trauma. Here we are again. Today is uh, the 24th of October, and Mr. Christopher has not got justice yet. It's really kind of amazing how they can lock somebody up for five years on false domestic violence charges, lose the file, claim the man is delusional because they lose the file, and five years later, when my camera was in the courtroom on October 17th, I caught the judge saying, hey, my clerk pulled it up. It's not lost. You want us to keep it with this file and trail the current file? Mr. Emmerich has made the representation that he had difficulty obtaining that file. Please look at it now. I had asked Mr. Lucas, our courtroom clerk, to pull up the case number through the computer system and then ask that the file be pulled up today, and I was retrieved it today. That was just absolutely amazing. And it was caught on tape, and I think Judge Erica Yu was not real pleased that that was all caught on tape. I think she wanted to be seen as the judge that made things right, that hey, the file was lost, oops, we got it. What Judge Yu didn't know is that in the prior week, Mr. Kareem Hyder, who will uh, telling you about the skullduggery in the uh, Mr. Christopher case, he and I were both talking to the defense attorney, Melvin Emmerlich. We both heard him clearly say he had just gone to the clerk's office, asked for the file, and couldn't get the file. Isn't that amazing? Now, Mr. Hyder and I both heard him say this. Change the transcripts because it doesn't have evidence as they as change one of the transcripts because they, just, they can't find it anymore. They lost some of the transcripts, so-called. Yeah, he, told, he said directly that, that the document was missing, no one could find it. That the document was missing, no one could find it. That the document was missing, no one could find it. But Judge Yu didn't know that. The file has in fact, been lost for years. Lost, like we aren't going to let you see it because you might discover that you could get yourself out of jail. I think Mr. Christopher is fired 
dismissed about a dozen attorneys because they all want him to take a plea agreement and just agree to be guilty of a felony when he's innocent in false accusations made in domestic violence. While I was up there in the hallway outside Department 43 in San Jose in the Santa Clara County Courthouse, here comes a woman, comes over to me and asks me what I do, and I tell her, and she says, you know what? I didn't waive my right to a speedy trial, and they waived it for me. I'm like, what? This was not Judge Erica Yu. This was uh, apparently Judge Chapman, I think. Sharon Chapman was a judge in that case. And I said, they can't waive it for you. You have to personally waive your right to a speedy trial. So in the live footage you're going to see here on, on Second Thought today, you're going to see a piece of tape repeated. I deliberately, William Joseph Christopher. And he asked, like, well, like where's the file? Where's the file? Where's the file? He only said it once. Now if it's not there, why is it not there? 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 The point is, the file was lost. His attorney, which is no longer his attorney, Mr. Emmerlich, was acknowledging that, yeah, the file was lost. I don't know what to do about it. Then Judge Yu says, oh, we found the file. Amazing. But even to get my camera into the courtroom, was a her amend, I just, I can't tell you. It was fax this person, fax that person, fax them. I'm faxing media requests. Normally, I call up the jail. I just, you know, pick up the phone. I call up the jail and I say, hey, I'm William Wagner. I'd like to do an interview with an inmate you've got there, so and so. And they say, hey, no problem. Uh, just show us your ID and you can come in, bring your camera. We'll set it up in an hour or two hours. In William Joseph Christopher's case, they've, postponed me now for a month. I just want to do an interview. This is freedom of the press, First Amendment right. And the jailers are obstructing it. And I think now the new defender of Mr. Christopher is going to obstruct it. But I wanted you to hear the message because Judge Erica Yu's clerk, Les Lucas, called me several times saying, send it, fax it here, fax it there, no, fax it there. Oh, I guess you better fax it directly to us. And I finally do. And then the judge still calls me to explain they still need another copy fax. Meanwhile, you only have five days to get a media request in, and the days are ticking away. Click, click, click. Eight, six, six, oh, oh. Hi, Mr. Wagner. This is Judge Erica Yu. Can I call you regarding your media request? The document was faxed. And then somehow it went to Judge Foley, who denied the request and really should not have gone to him. Thank you. Bye-bye. That's the message from Judge Erica Yu. Les Lucas, her clerk, had already called me three or four times, and I'm wondering, how can I fax it to the place they tell me to fax it to? It goes, And then the judge finally calls me herself. I think Judge Yu is trying very hard to appear to be proper and judicially correct because finally I did get my camera and you're going to see that footage of Mr. William Joseph Christopher in the court arguing with the judge and he finally says, how about justice? How about justice, Your Honor? 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 I mean, they won't just let him have copies of the first file. It was lost for five years. The judge doesn't want to acknowledge it, but she finds a file.